A fascinating new study concludes that carbs and sugars are absolutely to blame for the increase in obesity and type 2 diabetes rates, and fat and saturated fat play no role whatsoever. Now, that's a little bit of an over-exaggeration of what we can really conclude from it, but it's a, a really a fascinating study that I, I really enjoyed. And you can say it's sort of like kind of a poor quality, not very helpful study or a really interesting study. And I think those are both true. So rather than giving you more sort of generic and vague suggestions about what the study is, let's get into the details. I'm Dr. Brett Scher, the medical director at dietdoctor.com. And this study is titled Dietary Transitions and Health Outcomes in Four Populations, Systematic Review. Um, and this is in Frontiers in Nutrition in Feb in a uh, February of 2022. Now, part of what I like about this study is just like, I don't know how cool it is. Like they, they identified four specific populations that underwent a meaningful transition, meaning either moving from their country, which was, you know, a lower industrialized country to a more industrialized country, or when changes were made in their um, dietary makeup of their country that they were in. So four, uh, four populations that had this significant transition, they tracked the data that said, how has their diet changed specifically for calories and fat and saturated fat and carbs and sugar? And then what happened to their health outcomes, specifically obesity, um, diabetes, and high blood pressure. And like a lot of observational studies, right, this cannot tell you at all cause and effect because there's so much confounding variables. Um, and one of the biggest ones is when people left their more traditional society, their activity level went down um, and their, their amount of sitting went up dramatically, right? So that's one change right there that's going to have a huge impact. But let's get into the food um, impacts as well and what the food changes were. So first, what were these four? The first are Yemenite Jews who went from Yemen to Israel. Okay, so that's a pretty clear transition. And they talk about in the paper, like when the transitions happened and how they define them. I won't get into those details. The next was the Tokelo. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. T-O-K-E-L-A-U um, in New Zealand. Uh, they're in South Pacific Island, sort of off of New Zealand. And a number of them migrated to New Zealand in the paper, they say, because of overcrowding on the islands. Um, the next is the Tanushimaru. Tanushimaru in Japan, which is a farming village in Japan. Now, interesting, this population didn't transition location, um, but their diet and their lifestyle changed significantly, uh, they say, after 1958 when governmental initiatives, including dietary and economic changes, were enacted. So they didn't physically change, but their, their society, their culture changed. And then the Maasai, who are uh, pastoralists in Tanzania and Kenya, and they transitioned to government-supported ranching programs where their diet changed from mostly um, blood milk and meat to maize, grains, and cereals. Um, so four distinct populations, all with uh, you know different locations and different transitions, but the key being going from their more traditional um, lifestyles to the more sort of industrialized, westernized, at least moving in that direction. And when you look at how the diet changed and the health outcomes, you start to see some patterns. So table one in this uh, paper is really interesting. So if you look at just the Yemenites, their total calories increased in the zero to 10% range. Their fat decreased the zero to 10% range, as did their proteins, which in the protein decreased. But what increased was their carbs. And specifically when it comes to fat, their saturated fatty acids decreased in the 11 to 50% range. So their saturated fat decreased quite a bit. But what increased was their POFA, their polyunsaturated fatty acids increased by over 100%. And my guess is this isn't PUFA that they're getting from fatty fish and nuts and seeds. This is probably PUFAs they're getting from, um, they don't say this in the paper, but my guess is from ultra processed foods or from you know seed, highly processed seed oils. Their starch went down, their fiber went down. So their carbs went up with starch and fiber going down and added sugar went up over 100%. And what was the result? Body mass index increased 19%, but listen to this one. Their diabetes incidence increased over 4,000%. Now that could be you know, maybe not getting uh, proper monitoring or testing for diabetes before, or I don't know, a change in how they define definition, I don't know. But 
clearly 4,000% is an enormous change um, that is certainly noteworthy. Their blood pressure increased as well. And so based on this, you know, knowing that it's not a causative effect because there's so much confounding variables, but certainly can't be the saturated fat as the as the the main factor causing or leading to type 2 diabetes and increased body mass index because the saturated fat went down. But what went up were the carbs and the added sugar, okay, with all the caveats. All right, then we go to the, the Tokolo, and their calories increased in 11 to 50% range. Again, fat went down, saturated fat went down, PUFAs went up by over 100%. Added sugar went up by over 100%. And their body mass index went up by almost 20%. The diabetes incidence went up 133%. And their blood pressure went up. Then there's the Maasai. And the Maasai, the total calories went up in the 11 to 50% range, with again, with fat going down. Um, but not much of a change, they said, in saturated fats or PUFAs um, or added sugar. Uh, but diabetes went up 127%, uh, with BMI going up between 6 and 11%. So again, that's with calories going up, but fat going down. Now, the other one is the Tanushimaru from Japan, where the total calories actually went down. All right, so remember, this is the, the one that didn't change locations. They just changed sort of the culture and the, the society. So um, their calories went down. Their fat went up. Their protein went up and their carbs went down. So they started eating a lower carb, higher fat diet, and their diabetes did not change. They did not have the increase, um, the dramatic increase in, in diabetes that the other populations had, and their blood pressure didn't change either. So interesting to juxtapose those, that they didn't have the same negative health, health outcomes with their fat going up and their carbs going down compared to the other populations that had their fat go down their carbs go up and their saturated fats. Okay, so it's a lot of data. You can look at the table yourself. They actually looked at other populations and you can see that in table two um, in the paper. There's not as much data there, so harder to draw conclusions. But basically, what conclusions can you draw? One, it was pretty impressive undertaking to, to look through all these studies and, and kind of a cool way to look at things. Two, tons of confounders. You can't blame it just on nutrition alone. But three, you can't implicate saturated fat or total fat in the um, increase of diabetes that these populations saw or the increase in body mass index or the increase in high blood pressure and metabolic dysfunction. You certainly can't blame it on saturated fats as those went down. So, I mean, that's one conclusion we can draw from this um, and really makes you sort of question, you know, all the emphasis on lower fat diets that's been going on forever. One more piece of the puzzle, right? Not the strongest piece of evidence, but kind of a cool, cool paper to look at. What can we say about protein? Probably not a whole lot. Um, the, for the Yemenites, protein went down, and for the Maasai, protein went down, of course, with the dramatic increase in diabetes in those populations. For the Tokolo, protein went up, and they still had the increased incidence in diabetes. So, I don't know, you could say it wasn't enough to counteract the negative effects of the sugar and the carbs, or but that's all conjecture at this point, all right? So, um, I don't know, what do you walk away with? Don't, don't worry about fat. Don't worry about saturated fat for most people. What matters more is sort of the overall context of your diet, the overall context of your lifestyle. And those were the things that were uprooted for these populations. Um, and that's more important probably than, than individual macronutrients too. So cool study. We'll link to it if you want to um, see all the tables and everything. And hope this was helpful. If it was, click the thumbs up and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time on Diet Doctor News on YouTube.